the first drill we're going to talk about guys is what we call towel drill so what towel drill is it started off way back when we used to use big tall traffic cones and put little towels in them well we realized that that was creating a pretty competitive environment guys started to fall over that so we started using tackling donuts but for you guys that don't have those big tackling donuts tackle rings whatever you want to call them it's just as simple you're trying to give the guy something to finish on whether that's a cone whether it's a dummy whether it's a pop-up whether it's just a coach standing there give them something to finish the drill on now what we do is we, we pair these guys up tall drill is a punt return punt drill so the punt guys are, are trying to get off the block the punt return guys are, are trying to do a great job of not letting those guys get past us and not let them get to that tackle donut the distance here guys we will change that up depending on the day, depending on the week, where we're at in the season. Uh, typically 15 yards, can be 20 yards, can shorten up to 10 if, if you really wanted to. Again, the purpose of the drill is kind of working that release as a punt guy and then as a punt D or punt return guy, not allowing these guys to, to get off the football and run. Now we'll have our whole football team do this drill. I mean, you're talking about O-linemen, D-linemen, we'll get everybody involved. And we'll split it up into four lines. We'll have a line out there on the numbers, a line on each hash, and then another line out there on the numbers. So that way we're getting everybody a ton of reps. It's a big evaluation tool for us to see, hey, who's really good at holding guys up on the line of scrimmage and who's really good at getting off blocks, stacking and running and win with our punt team. Some things we do with tall drill. You know, not only is it competitive, you get to see who wins and, lo and, and loses by touching that dummy. But we also grade it. So this is our towel drill grade sheet. And what we do with this to create great competition, we'll post this in our locker room, in our media rooms, we'll post it everywhere. So we get the chance to see who is taking the reps and who is not taking the reps. Guys that want to be on special teams, guess what? They're going to take two or three reps. You can see Jaden Price right here. He took four reps this day in that given period. That's a pretty good job We're seeing that he wants to show up. You look, and then the other part of it is who are the guys that are doing really well at it? You know, a guy that's going three and all, and who are the guys that aren't doing really well at it? A guy that went one and four, probably not a guy that's really great on special teams right now. So it's twofold. How do you get more people involved in special teams? Man, post this stuff so their teammates can see and hold each other accountable. And the second phase of it is now we're getting a chance to see guys continuously show up winning and winning and winning. Well, those are the guys that I really want to coach. And I want to have those guys on our special teams. So a quick look at the drill. Again, we have a punt return guy that's using our, our mug technique. We'll kind of talk about what that is in a little bit. And we have a punt guy starting right here. We'll have sometimes have a coach in here, which will we'll give a foot just to simulate the ball and simulate the get off. And then down on the end of the field, we'll have a tackling donut set up. So I'm gonna try to show you the, the footage here. So again, this day we're doing it with about 20 yards away from the point where we're starting. And we just kind of split it up late. This is a little bit later in the season where we just had two groups going. Again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to hold this guy up, not let him get there. We're trying to get off the ball, get off the block, and run to win. So this is a really good clip. I'll try to go in slow motion for you guys so you guys can see that. As soon as that ball wiggles or that ball moves, man, here we go. We're getting off. We're starting to get our hands into the chest of these guys, running these guys, not allowing them to get off the block. You know, that's a great job by these guys. It's great phase by the punt return guy, doing a phenomenal job, holding this guy up and not allowing him to get off and run. So in, in theory, in real life, man, the returner catches the ball, and here we go. And that's exactly what we're looking for in this drill. Who are guys that are really good at holding stuff up? Who are the guys that are better at getting off of blocks and running? And when we're grading this, guys, keep it real simple. It's a win, it's a loss. If, if you ever get confused or something's just unclear of who won, who lost a thing, if they both had a good rep, sometimes we're not afraid to give both guys a win in most columns. So don't be afraid to do that. But clearly in this rep, you can see who won and who lost. Really simple. We kept this guy away from the return the whole time. That's the winner in this crew. So a little bit about how we train our punt D guys and our guys that are holding stuff up. First, we're always going to talk about stance. We'll talk about two different types of two-point stances and even a three-point stances in certain instances. So two-point stance are our speed stance. Again, I like to use terms, terminology, words, phrases, so that way we can give guys quick coaching points out there on the field. So our speed stance is what you guys refer to a wide receiver stance. So that was a great example right here by Dustin Talbert showing our speed stance right here. His inside foot is up, 
He's ready to go, showing great demeanor, like he's gonna come off and run. So that's an example of a speed stance. The first thing is great demeanor. We must sell pressure every time. Our blocks, whenever we come after a punt, must look the same as the return. So we're trying to make sure we do a great job of selling that demeanor, we call it, making it look like, oh shoot, I have to block this guy because he's gonna go and try to block the punt. That's what we're trying to do. Coaching points, inside foot forward, our spine angle has to be the block point. What do I mean by spine angle? Well, right here, if the ball is here and the punter is back in here, Destin Talbert, DT, is putting his spine on an angle to go block the punt wherever that punter's at. If the punter ends up being over here, guess what? His spine angle better be at that angle right there. Because if you're going to sell nonchalant and your spine is at this angle going straight up the field, guess what? He knows that you're not running to go block the punt if the punter's in here. Man, now I know I can just release and run on you. So that's what we talk about with our guys is our spine angle has to be pointing towards the block point. Got to have great knee bend with forward lean. Got to have our hands up in an attacking position. And again, our eyes are going to be key in the football. As soon as that ball wiggles, that's where we're going to triggers us to get across the line of scrimmage and get on these guys. The next two-point stance we'll talk about is a power stance. So this is just your typical press corner and press man stance. Again, it's, hey, power stance, guys. I'm shouting that out. Everybody knows what a power stance is because we've coached it before we get out there. Guys know what we're doing. Anytime your opponent is in a staggered stance or if your opponent's split out in a wide receiver stance, speed stance, you're a corner and press man. That's when we'll use that stance. And then lastly, guys, we have our three-point stance. Certain, certain weeks, we're going to get down there. We want to be more aggressive. Maybe we're, we're coming after punts and blocking them a little bit more this week. So then we want everything to look the same. So we'll go to a three-point stance. For us and for me at North Dakota State, we don't care which hand is down. Just make sure your opposite foot is back. Whatever hand is down, make sure you got that foot back. And we don't want guys to be thinking like, oh, I got to have my inside or outside hand down. We want to make sure that they're down, they're comfortable, and they're ready to go, whatever that stance may look.